jobs and joke you broke Your blood lost to your way It's like you're always stuck in second gear When it hasn't been your day, your week, your month Or even your year But I'll be there for you I'm Ruth Ann Clemens. And I'm Jamie Cutoff. Today is Wednesday, December 20th, 2016. Friday, December 9th at approximately 7 p.m. during the Afton vs. Bayless Boys High School Basketball game held at Bayless, there was a shooting that occurred in the lobby. We want to assure you that no Afton students were harmed or involved. Following the incident, all attendees of the game were placed on lockdown, according to a safety update posted on AftonSchools.net. According to KSDK.com, the person shot was a former Bayless graduate. He suffered a gunshot wound to his shoulder. Fortunately, it only grazed him and he is in good condition. The former grad said the incident occurred over a scuffle involving a $5 debt. According to KSDK.com, authorities are still looking for the shooter and two other suspects. Fortunately, all other attendees of the game were kept safe and later released. No word yet has been released on whether the game will be rescheduled. Glad everyone's okay. Hopefully, the other persons involved will be found soon. Now on to our other stories. Yes, we have a lot of anchoring to do before break. I hope we get done in time. Speaking of winter break, there are only two more days left for us to get out, and for some of us, we aren't coming back. Where are you going? What? No, Jamie, you can't leave. What will we do here without you? I think you'll be fine. No, that means I'll be in charge. I can't be in charge. I can't even boil water. Well, maybe you can learn as a New Year's resolution. What are you talking about? Speaking of New Year's resolutions, Logan did a story on them. Logan, go change the subject! The tradition of New Year's resolutions started thousands of years ago. According to History.com, around 4,000 years ago, the ancient Babylonians made a promise to their god that they would repay their debt and return any borrowed goods. Breaking this promise would result in many misfortunes, unlike today's resolutions. Now let's see what people are doing for theirs. Um, my, well, my resolution coming into the school year that I was going to stay ahead of my wor work, uh, that didn't work out. So my, I'm going to renew my resolution. It will be my New Year's resolution to stay at least a couple of chapters ahead of where I am in each of the two books I teach out of. So. Uh, I do have a couple. Um, the main one that I'm working on right now is to uh, keep up my health, uh, mental and physical. Yes, I do have a New Year's resolution. Um, I want to get back in touch with my family members. Um, a New Year's resolution is to grow a brighter brain and also be prepared for the finals in the next upcoming year. My New Year's resolution is to stop making long-term goals. So my New Year's resolution this year is to uh, get better at Pokemon. Uh, I have two of them. The first one is I want to read a book every two days. My New Year's res resolution would be just going out more, hanging more times with my friends. My New Year's resolution is, well, I'm working on a book, and my resolution is to uh, do something with it before the end of next year. Well, my New Year's resolution is to read more. I don't usually read, so I think it'd be nice to get a little more reading done. Thanks for watching. Great job, Logan. Recently, St. Louis County introduced a new smoking law. Brady did a story on it. Well, let's see it. Last year in St. Louis County, nearly 2,000 people died from smoking, and nearly 800 kids have started smoking in the past year. This new law, which was passed on December 3rd, called Tobacco 21 or T21, uh, has changed the smoking age from 18 to 21. So what do you think about the new smoking law? Um, I think it's a pretty good thing because it, it means that there's going to be less people smoking and that's a, that ends up being a good thing for me because um, cigarette smoke is pretty nasty. Alright, and what do you think was going to happen to the people who are smoking ages like 18 to uh, 20? Um, well, I hope it's not uh, criminalized for them because they're probably already uh, addicted and um, that would be pretty bad if they would you know, get thrown into jail for that. Um, 
hopefully though it encourages that the uh, people who are already smoking like from 18 and to 20 well I hope they take the law seriously and uh, enforce it enough to where they'd stop all right, all right thank you Nice work, Brady. So, Ruth, I'm not talking to you. You're being a child about this. At least I'm a child who isn't running away from her best friend. Whatever, didn't you do a story on the election recount? I did, Invisible Person. Let's see it. As everyone knows already, the election occurred November 8th, 2016, and Donald Trump was elected president on November 9th. But on November 23rd, the Green Party candidate, Jill Stein, spearheaded the recount effort on the grounds that unspecified anomials may have affected the election's outcome. According to BBC, the recount is taking place in three Rust Belt states, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. To get some perspective and opinions, I spoke with Mr. Utah, sponsor of the Young Republicans Club, Mr. Kramer, sponsor of the Young Democrats Club, as well as others, to see their take on the matter. Were you aware that there was a recount taking place? Yes, the only time that I was aware a recount was taking place was when we heard it on the news, social media, so Twitter, Facebook. Uh, any of the major cable network news stations was the only time I, I heard that it was that it was taking place. Yes, super aware. Okay. Yes, I am aware. Okay. And why do you think Jill Stein pushed for a recap? Um, I think she was alarmed by some of the uh, news reports coming out about potential hacking or uh, could have even been um, just unreliability of polls and things like that. I'm hoping the reason she did it was to make sure everything was, was correct and accurate so that our political system is, is the way it should be. What is your <clears throat> like, kind of personal opinion on the matter of the recount? Do you think it was necessary? Um, I don't necessarily think it was necessary um, simply because it was not close. Um, it's always nice to kind of double check your results and I think that's I don't know if I would call it necessary, but it was a nice um, indicator that everything is working as it should. As of December 12th, according to the New York Times, the recount effort has ended in both Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, both declaring Donald Trump the winner. See you guys next year. This is Ruth Ann Clements with Cougar News, signing off. Great job, Ruth. Thanks, Ghost of Jamie, because she's dead to me. You know what? We're going to a commercial break. <laughs> Hey, what class are you going to? I'm going to Bosnia and American Studies. What do you even do in that class? What do we even do? We do tons of fun activities. Like what? Well, we have group discussions about Bosnia and American culture. We eat food from different Bosnian backgrounds. We have guest speakers who video chat with us about Bosnian heritage. And we all know everyone loves field trips. But how can I join? Go talk to your counselors today about joining next semester. Anime is pretty boring. Anime isn't boring. Yes, it is. It's all the same. Not all anime is the same. There are various genres, such as comedy, action, horror, romance. There's even sports anime. Okay, so what if I don't know what to watch? There's always anime club. Come on down to the anime club at room 28 on Thursdays. What's wrong, man? This class is so boring. I wish I could take creative film again. It was so fun. You do know there's an advanced creative film, right? There is? Yeah, come on, follow me. So you want to take another film class? That's all I want. Then you should have taken advanced creative film. You get to go around campus and edit. That actually sounds pretty fun. Then let's go switch your class today before it's too late. All right, let's go. Club. Have you thought about joining the GSA? GSA? Don't you have to be gay to join that? Well, not necessarily. The GSA is just sort of an open place where everybody can go. It doesn't matter what you identify as or what your orientation is. It's a safe place for everyone. Really? When is it? It's on Thursdays. Every Thursday in Mr. Jenny's room 50. Yeah, I think I'm going to join. You can't stop me from hanging out with Linda. Stop calling my mother Linda. <coughs> and we're back. In the past few weeks, principals have been visiting you in every class to have students take a survey on their teachers. I did a story on it. Hello, Afton, and welcome to the end of 2016. 
Within the past few weeks, administrators from the building have been seeing you in every class so that you can survey your teachers. Um, I like them. Like, I take all of the surveys because I just enjoy taking surveys. And I think that it's, like, really good so, like, the teachers know, like, like, you know, the feedback of the students. I think that they're useful, like, for the teachers, but I think it would be nice if we could kind of write what we think. Do you feel as though your voice is heard? Um, I think it is being heard, but not as much as it could be. I do, yeah. Teacher surveys are being done in conjunction with the evaluation system that the Afton School District uses district-wide. The survey questions are aligned with the areas of focus that we look for when we do classroom observations. That's the main reason why we're doing the surveys, because the students get an opportunity to then give their perspective of that. The survey data is anonymous. Um, it is collected and it, it's, it's a form of feedback for the teacher. Um, it gives them an opportunity to see how the students are viewing their efforts in the classroom. The NEE system is a growth model. Its basic purpose is to have teachers reflect and make changes to the way that they do things in their classrooms to meet their students' needs. And, you know, learning is, is what the outcome of, of any classroom should be. I believe that they make a difference because they get it, it's a form of feedback. Teachers would look at that information and think and reflect about their practice and make some changes that would ultimately see those things shift so that they can better meet their students' needs as we move from first semester into second semester. This is Jamie Cotto from Cougar News signing off. Adam Toby here with Cougar News. Today I got the chance to speak with Dr. Powell about his first semester this year at Afton. Uh, my favorite thing here at Afton is the students. Um, students are great. I love uh, interacting with them, getting to know them. Um, it's just a lot of fun. That's why I got into education was because of the students and uh, students at Afton are the best. Um, my number one goal um, since I've been in education is just to help kids uh, be prepared for their future. And I think um, that's the goal again that I have here at Afton is just to make sure that once you leave Afton, you're prepared for anything that you want to do. Um, the thing about leaving high school is I want to make sure that every student has choices. Um, because right now students, a lot of them don't know what they want to do. And so if we can prepare the students the best we can so that they have many choices once they leave high school, that's, that's what I'd like to do. I also got the chance to speak with Dr. Lingens and Dr. Lukey about how they feel about Dr. Powell. What's it like been working with Dr. Powell? It's been great. I mean, it's an opportunity to, as I stated, I, you know, it, it's, it's new leadership in the building, uh, new perspective. It's just a growth opportunity. You know, I think that his, his mission is to, to continue to have improvement academically, socially, for, for students and for staff. You know, he has a vision for the school and, and what he wants to do. And, and he's trying to lay the groundwork to get people on board with that, uh, with that plan and that vision. My favorite thing about Dr. Powell is that he's a calm fellow. He's got a lot of experience. I think we can call on that experience. We've seen that several times this year, specifically in critical issues where um, he's shown that his experience uh, will lead us in the right way. So I'd say that's probably my favorite thing is just the opportunity to grow and learn from somebody who's been there. That's all the time I have for you guys today. I'm Adam Toby with Cougar News. Great job, Adam. Amazing job, Adam. Speaking of administrators here at Afton, didn't Isaiah do a story on what changes the principals are bringing this year? That's right. Changes you won't get to see because you're abandoning me. Well, let's see it. <laughs> I'm Isaiah Wilson, and these are our three principals at Afton High School. I spoke with each principal about how they feel this year is going and related topics. I think this year is going pretty well. Um, I'm getting used to everything here at Afton, figuring out how everything works here in Afton, and uh, I think it's going well. I'm enjoying it. I think it's going great. I think it's been a great year so far. Are there any improvements and or changes coming up? Well, I think probably you know one of the biggest changes that we anticipate is the um, enforcement of uh, uh, an attendance policy. Uh, we believe that there is a direct correlation and we know that there's a direct correlation between you know those students who come to school and those students who do not. You come to school you do well. Uh, you don't come to school you may not do as well. We have a problem with, with truancy. We have a problem with late arrivals in the morning arriving after 
740. And I feel like Dr. Langmans and I have been very clear with students what the expectations are, and we're burning up some parents' phones, and we're trying to get students to understand that the expectation is to be here on time. Uh, we also are trying to be very clear with students about the expectation of having 90% attendance. Um, that is how we are uh, evaluated, for lack of a better term, by the state. They want 90% of the student body to be here 90% of the time. And that's something that we continue to try to find strategies to, to shift. At this time, I realized that I too have had a few visits to the office for late arrival. What are the principals most concerned about? I think our internal focus is student learning. We want to help our kids improve their ACT scores. We want to help our kids uh, perform better at, uh, on state testing. Um, you know, we want our kids to understand how what we're doing now is preparing them for the next phase of life. We're just looking at ways to um, better help our students that are struggling in classes. Um, also looking at ways to um, add enrichment to some of our classes for some of our higher level students. Um, but really just trying to support our students in every way that we, that we can. Nice work, Isaiah. On a lighter note, Christmas is coming up. Wait, Christmas is coming up? Yeah, in like five days. But I still need to get presents for people. Well, here's Azra's story on last minute gift ideas. Hey Afton, the holidays are coming up and so are the prices of presents. Luckily, we found some cheap and easy DIY gifts for you to try. Let's go get to them. So the first DIY we're going to do involves a mug, sharpie, warm water, toothpicks, and also nail polish. All right, so we're going to start off with two colors. And we chose like a sparkly rose gold and a light pink. So we'll just add a couple drops real quick to the water. And we'll move it a little bit. And then we'll add the sparkles to create some festivity. Let's go. And then you'll mix it around just to create some cool patterns to mix your cup in. And then literally, you grab your cup. And it doesn't have to be even. You can crookedly put it in there. Yep. Totally put water in there. But as you see, it's in there. Uh, occasionally I do do DIY gifts. Uh, my big thing that I like to do is um, I enjoy creating cards and creating some type of uh, image or designing an image, an illustration of some sort with uh, some hand lettering and I like to um, kind of customize it for whoever it is I'm going to give it to and um, send it with a Christmas card. Uh, I like to make cards. My mom always uh told me that if I can't buy a gift then just make a card because it's more sincere or whatever. See that gave you some ideas. Shh, crafting. Well, while you're making whatever that is, why don't we take a commercial break? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. Ow, it's sticking to my fingers. <laughs> Do you run home? I got it. Man, I wish there was a way I could show off my school spirit. Have you checked out the merchandising club? No, I haven't. It's pretty cool. Let's go do that. And all this stuff is so cool. I'm so glad we got it. Dude, it's actually lit, fam. Like, I feel so warm and I have school spirit, too. Woo! Man, I loved creative film. Too bad there's not another class I could take. And you should try TV production today. Well, what's that? Why, it's only the coolest thing ever. You get to be an anchor for the school news, work the school camera, meet cool people, and make funny parodies. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Go see your counselor, then. Come see me today. Are you part of any club? Actually, I'm a part of Stuco. Stuco, what's that? Dude, it's so cool. Stand up and I'll show you. Like a good neighbor, Stuco is there. What's up? Well, oh, that's so cool. Can I try? Do it. Like a good neighbor, Stuco is there for more information. Hey, Stuco does a bunch of stuff like Spirit, Homecoming, Breakfast of Santa, and Trick or Treat Street. 
Alright, that sounds awesome. I'm going to enjoy Stuco. Awesome! If you need more information about Stuco, please visit Miss Allen in the A Plus office. What's wrong? I never really got to know much about my African American side, and I'm just really interested. Have you considered joining the African American Cultural Club? It's a cool club where we learn about and discuss African American culture. Is anybody of any race or age can join? Where do I sign up? You can email Coach Bird, Deja Overall, or Taylor Nunley for more information. Space for design. Create, learn, make, do, soul, share, and collaborate. Oh, welcome to Innovation Club. My name is Vincent. Alright, uh, what exactly is this club? It's the club where you can do anything between web design and talking just up here all day. Oh my god. Wait, where can I sign up? You can sign up anytime on Thursdays in Mr. Pereira's room, room 15. Alright, great. Thanks. We'll see you next Thursday. Yeah. Welcome back, Afton. Now let's see Vince's story on how to give back this holiday season. Are you guys feeling generous this holiday season? I went to go speak with some different local charities and organizations about ways you can give back this holiday season. The Humane Society of Missouri is involved in a lot of different things. First is uh, Animal Cruelty Task Force. We also help when they have floods and the animals need to be relocated to a temporary location until their uh, owners can be, until they can be reunited. And then we put animals up for adoption and we adopt out dogs, cats, birds, hamsters, rabbits. And then at our Long, Long Meadow Rescue Ranch in Union, Missouri, we also have goats, pigs, horses, cows, ducks, geese, things like that. Ronald McDonald House Charities of St. Louis provides comfort, care, and a home away from home for families of seriously ill children who travel to St. Louis for medical treatment. And what are ways we can give back to your organization? People can help the Ronald McDonald House um, in a few ways. So you can volunteer at our facilities. Um, you can donate items from our wish list, which includes um, household items, as well as um, snacks and food items for our families, as well as monetary donations. And all information about giving back can be found at rmhcstl.com. Obviously, they can give money. They can uh, donate items on our wish list, like cows and blankets and peanut butter and things like that. Uh, they can volunteer their time. And um, so we have many different ways. If you go to our website at hsmo.org, uh, it'll list all the opportunities for volunteering and so forth. Hey there, guys. Vinnie Marsh here. That's my story. Have a nice holiday break. Good job, Vincent. What is that? It's an ornament. For you. Oh, Ruth, that's so thoughtful. Are you still leaving? Yes. Since 2017 is coming up, our very own Louise did a story on changing your schedules for next year. Let's see it. Every year, Afton High School has their students pick their classes for the next school year. They all get a yellow book and pick them all out. I want a few students to ask them a few questions. Are you aware of all the credits you still need to graduate? Yes, I still need a couple more classes that I need to take next semester and next year. Uh, yeah, I'm all aware. The school updates me on that kind of stuff, like I can go in, see how many credits I need to graduate, and I'm aware of all that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I only have like one or two left, um, like English and stuff like that. But otherwise, I think I have everything, and everything I'm taking now is just like extra to get into college. So. I think it's pretty good. I like how there's... I can choose my classes, and I like the wide variety of classes to choose from. What is your opinion on how the school manages the way you get your classes? I believe that the school has a very good way of how we do classes for next year. We talk about it a little bit right now, and then we actually choose the classes a month later. Um, me personally, I like it because like you can go to your counselor comfortably and say, hey, I want to take this class, and they're super flexible about it, and it makes it really enjoyable throughout your school year. Um, I think it's pretty organized. Um, sometimes it can be a little crazy to have the day where teachers have to go through and explain everything, but it's also very informative because it helps us know what we need to be ready for next year. So. Afton High has so many classes to take. Make sure you get all the credits you need to graduate. 
Good job, Louise. Now it's time for 2016's final Sport of the Week. Well, what's up, Afton? This week's Sport of the Week is cheerleading. I was given the honor to talk with Miss Lawrence and some of the cheerleaders about how their season is going this year. I have been coaching cheerleading for 27 years, 20 of them being here at Afton. This season we're doing really well. Uh, we took home many different awards, including the Big Spirit Award, which is the giant banana at our camp this summer. And we also took home two Camp Champ trophies, uh, one in cheer and one in dance. I was also given the opportunity to speak with some of the cheerleaders about what they think about their season. Um, our season's going pretty good. We've only had one major injury, which is good news, but we've had a lot of new kids, so it's been a really nice experience teaching them all new stuff. My season is going great. We won the banana at camp. I honestly think it's going great. Um, I learned some new things that like, I thought it would be easy, but honestly, it's been challenging, but great. The season's going pretty good so far. Like We just got through with the pep assembly, and that was pretty, pretty stressful, but we got through it. Thanks for watching my story. This is Ryan from Cougar News, signing off. Great job, Ryan. That's all the time we have for now. Thank you always for watching. I won't miss you. Thank you, Ruth. I'm Jamie Cutoff. And I'm Ruth Ann Clemens. And this, and this is Cougar, Cougar News, News signing off. off for 2016. Oh. You're supposed to keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I might have to shoot myself. I'll be there for